He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might both be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain. For the first things are past away. Brothers and sisters, as we meet in this fashion to celebrate the life that God gave to our departed sister, Gwendolyn Viola Bourne. Let us continue in worship as we blend our voices in the singing of the hymn through all the changing scenes of life.
Amen. Please be seated in the presence of God while we invite the Reverend Al Walcott to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and love, we may not be overcome by this trial but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit ministered to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are met in this solemn moment to commend our sister Gwendolyn Viola Bourne into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us first hear the words of Holy Scripture, Psalm 46, which will be read responsively by Sister Elaine Bourne. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in all the earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in all the earth. The, Lord, the God of Jacob is our refuge.
Before we proceed with the musical tributes and expression of appreciation, we would like to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Dwight Sutherland, Minister of Housing, Lands and Maintenance. We would like to also acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Kirk Humphrey, Minister of People Empowerment and Elders Affairs. We would like also to acknowledge the presence of Minister Ian Gale, General Manager of National Housing Corporation. We also would like to acknowledge the presence of um, Ms. Fiona Goodridge, Deputy General Manager of National Housing Corporation. Welcome. We proceed with the tributes and expression of appreciation. We sing the hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain, after which Miss Cleany Booster will minister to us in song. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood?
men, please be seated. We invite now Ms. Kleenit to proceed after her brother Cleaver will also proceed in a tribute. Good morning, I'm Trevor Brewster, the second son of Gwendolyn Viola Bourne. Today we are here to celebrate and honor the life of my mother. I want to thank all of you who are here for participating in this celebration. There are many memories I have of my mother but there is one outstanding memory I have that have left a lasting impression on me. And it was her ability to consistently give and share with others, our friends, our family, our neighbors. And that has had a lasting impression on my life. And I'm very grateful and thankful for what she has taught me and my brother and my sisters. The last time I spoke with my mom was on her birthday. And we had a very good conversation and I was very happy and grateful for that opportunity. 
I look forward to seeing her again when our Lord and Savior comes. And Good morning. We will sing to the glory of God, the hymn, Love Divine, or Love's Excelling. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. Reverend Derek Richards, Bishop of the South, Caribbean District. Members of government already mentioned. Distinguished brothers and sisters in Christ. Ministerial colleagues, I greet you well and in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning, my entire family and I take this opportunity to thank all of you 
for coming from your various homes and gathering here in the sanctuary at Bethel, where my dearly beloved wife, Gwendolyn Viola Bourne, wants worship, and where she distinguished herself as a caring, kind, and loving person. As a matter of fact, as someone who, in every sense of the word, distinguished herself as a faithful and devoted servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Words alone cannot express our deep gratitude to you for your presence with us, for your support, and for your sincere condolences. In this time of my family's grief and loss, let me again take this opportunity to thank all of you most sincerely for your kind expressions of heartfelt sympathy. Let me also say how deeply appreciative we all are of your presence here with us at this homegoing service. I was surprised when I saw so many of my ministerial brothers and sisters arrive at the door. Special thanks to all of you. For me, it is an indication of the high regard and the esteem, high esteem in which you held my dear wife, Viola. And so this morning, as we celebrate her life, we must revere her memory. We must offer up in that same memory our last public tributes of praise, affection, love, and thanksgiving to God for lending her to us for just over 90 years. Vi, as I often call her, was a very loving, capable, and devoted wife. She was also a very dearly beloved and caring mother, grandmother, sister, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, cousin, and sincere friend of many, and indeed a trustworthy and true servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10, the wisdom writer asks a very interesting question. He asks, who can find a virtuous woman? I find this question a very interesting one. Indeed, for me, it depicts and also eulogizes the life of a capable woman, someone like my dear wife, Gwendolyn Viola. Gwendolyn Viola Bourne, affectionately known by all as Vi or Aunt Vi, was a woman who was trustworthy. She was someone who was generous and industrious. She was someone who was foresighted. Most important of all, she was someone who loved Jesus Christ as her Lord, Savior, and friend. These, to my mind, depict the qualities of a capable and virtuous woman. Her self-giving, sacrificial dimension of love for others was one of the characteristics which truly epitomized her Christian life. Those who knew her well would tell you, as you heard her son just saying, she gave freely of her time, her talents and her graces in the service of the Lord. Her expertise as a beautician and cosmetologist. Her professional knowledge and her culinary skills were all used for the good and welfare of others and to the honor and glory of God. 
Gwendolyn Viola Bourne, formerly Warner, first saw the light of day on the 24th of July, 1932. Her parents, Clement Nathaniel Warner and Winifred Amita Warner, lived at Villa House, Villa Road, Bedensel, in the parish of St. Michael. Viola received her early childhood education at St. Paul's Primary School. I remember her telling me one time how afraid she was on that particular school day when the riots broke out in 1937. Viola always had high praise for her big sister, Marin Elaine, who attended that same school with her. On completion of her primary education, Viola pursued a secondary course of studies at Lynch's Secondary School, Spryce Street, St. Michael. However, Viola, on account of the exuberance of youth, did not opt to complete her secondary education. She got married at an early age, and before reaching the age of 21, became a mother. That marriage gave rise to the birth of two lovely boys, Cecil Orlando Brewster, who is here with us, and Trevor Delisle Brewster, who just spoke to us from overseas. Gwendolyn Viola loved these children very dearly, and with the limited resources at her disposal, she used to the best of her ability the talents, the gifts, and the graces with which God had endowed her. First, she enrolled her children in preschool activities. And when they reached the stage for primary education, she had them enrolled at the St. Giles School, Government Hill St. Michael. It was very interesting to see how she used her ingenuity to overcome what she considered a very challenging problem. She engaged the services of a carpenter joiner, had a wooden crossbar built and placed on her lady's real bicycle so that she could transport these two children to school. And she did that activity every day of the week. Unfortunately, Gwendolyn's marriage did not last very long. However, not to be disheartened by her unfortunate circumstances. She trusted God for her life and looked forward to that day when life would be more meaningful for her and when she could be more productive, industrious, and helpful to others who came within the sphere of her influence. In December 1966, Gwendolyn felt led by God to make a fresh start in life. And so in trusting her life and her circumstances to God, in a marriage ceremony here at this Battle Methodist Church, she took vows of holy matrimony with me, Josiah Henry Boone. Since that day, on December the 22nd, 1966, Gwendolyn, affectionately called by, would always emphasize the importance of home and family life. She was always particularly ensuring that her three other children, Elaine, Henrietta, and Arlene, got the best possible care and attention. She also wanted all of them to receive the training 
which her circumstances in life would allow. Throughout the years of our marriage, there was always that spirit of love, of cooperation, and of helpfulness. As husband and wife, we communicated and always tried to understand each other. I first worked as a, a teacher at the Pine Primary School. Now the school now we named, I don't remember the name right now, the, the Grantley Prescott, the Grantley Prescott Primary School. I should have remembered because Grantley was one of my friends. And while at the Pine Primary School, the relationship between Vi and I grew. And I developed such an interest in Vi that I felt that God was moving me to choose her as my wife. And so when I returned from England on a Commonwealth scholarship at the University of Reading in 1966, I exchanged vows with her right here in this chapel in December of that year. When I was promoted and served as principal at the St. Mark's Senior School, and later at the Good Shepherd Mixed School in St. James during the years 1972 to 1984, my beloved wife also supported me in whatever way she could. Too many ways, too numerous to mention. And again, when I was promoted to serve as principal at the Bay Primary School in 1984 to 1992, my dear wife was always there for me, to support me whenever and wherever necessary. Truly, I could not ask for more. She was a capable woman and also a very industrious woman. In, 19, in July 1992, I opted for an early retirement from the teaching service so as to pursue ministerial training at the United Theological College of the West Indies. At first, my dear wife felt very unhappy about this decision. But later as we talked, she said to me, Henry, if you are sure that God is calling you in that direction, I will give you my wholehearted support. I later became a Methodist minister and served in Grenada, St. Lucia, and Tobago before returning to work in Barbados in 2012. Throughout those 20 years, my dear wife would commute traveling to the islands where I was serving, and she and I enjoyed fellowship and friendship with our Caribbean brothers and sisters. And in that way, truly our lives became a blessing to many. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, Can you imagine what it means to lose a loving, affectionate, and, difficult, and dutiful wife of 55 years? Can you also imagine what it means to lose a mother who has been so caring, so kind, and protective, especially to all of her children and grandchildren? Devotion to family, devotion to God, Devotion to duty and to her church were among the hallmarks of Viola's life and service. 
Wendin Viola has been a sincere and lifelong friend to me. I can vouch for her sincerity and her integrity of purpose in life. And so today, I deeply deplore her loss. But I thank God for the privilege of knowing her and sharing many of life's experiences with such a virtuous woman, indeed with such a friend, with such a kind and considerate wife and companion. In conclusion, I have often said to many people that one of the experiences with which all of us will have to cope at some time or other is that of parting with our loved ones through death. And if you have not as yet had that experience, I tell you that sometimes it can be a very, very painful experience. Why? Death separates. Death divides. Death leaves so many weak ones helpless in the face of adversity. Death at times leaves us with a feeling of emptiness. And I can assure you that the greater the fellowship, the greater the love which we want shared, the more intense the sorrow, the pain, the grief, and the loss will seem to be. Today, as I view the mortal remains of my dearly beloved wife, I take comfort from the fact that Jesus Christ, my Savior and my Lord, cares for me, and indeed he cares for my family. Jesus knows all about us, and he has promised never to leave us or forsake us in a time of grief and sorrow. Our God has promised to make a way of escape so that his children would be able to bear whatever test may come as uh, they were. Uh, this is the Christian hope. This is our sure and certain hope. It is a hope based entirely on the love, the mercy, and the grace of God made known to his people in Jesus Christ. It is a hope that saves beyond the grave. For we know that if this earthly tent in which we dwell is demolished or destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. My dearly beloved wife, Viola, lived and cherished this Christian hope. So I must say that today the storms of ill health for her are now over. And at last she has entered the gateway to a richer, fuller life, a life of surpassing quality and beauty, all because of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My dear wife and our sister Viola, is now in the presence of her maker, her defender, her redeemer, and her friend. She is at rest in the Lord. I thank God 
for the strength he has given to me to participate in this funeral service today for a couple of days ago. I just felt that I would not be able to do it. But I thank God for all of you. Thank God for your presence. And thank God for the grace which he has given to us. May her good deeds be an inspiration to all of us. And may we, by God's grace and the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, offer our own lives to Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And may we so live, so that when time for us shall be no more, we may be reunited with Viola and with all the saints of every age in that blessed land where there will be no more sorrow, no more sickness, and no more pain. Amen. My daughter, Dr. Arlene Bourne, will pay her short tribute as well. Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. This was the recent favorite hymn of Mrs. Gwendolyn Viola Bourne. Vi, Aunt Vi, Miss Bourne, Mama, my mother, who was born in one of the bedrooms upstairs at the villa in Warner's Road, Britain's Hill, St. Michael. Hers was a lifespan from 1932 until 2022, which meant that she was about five years old when the Clement Payne riots, which Daddy referred to, occurred, and seven years old when the Second World War broke out. She recalled being terrified as she peeked out of a bedroom window at the villa to see soldiers standing with guns outside of the house. Thankfully, no harm came to the occupants or neighborhood. When Hurricane Janet hit in 1955, Gwendolyn was a mere 23 years old, already a mother, and she spoke of the villa being packed with people, neighbors, and shelterers for the night because it had been transformed into a hurricane shelter. In 1966, when Barbados became independent, Gwendolyn and Josiah Henry became dependent on each other and on God to take them through a lifetime of love. I interviewed them around the time of their 55th wedding anniversary last year to find out what made them fall in love. Neither of them gave me a definitive answer but it was clear to my siblings and me that their love blossomed out of friendship, which can be the most powerful, enduring type of love. We have never heard our parents ar arguing or angry at each other. Not that disagreements never came, for surely they would have, but this couple settled things quickly and chose respect for each other and their family life in any matters. Could we, the children, 
find a loophole to sneak something past one of them? Never. If we ask one parent for permission to do something, the other parent would say, you asked your father yet? You asked your mother yet? So there we were. We had to come to them together to get any response or answer that we needed. Such was the defense of the armor in their solid relationship. Whilst Mama was a caring, kind, and loving person, she was a strict but compassionate mother as well. There's the story of my brother sneaking out of the house to ride his bicycle down Rendezvous Hill. I'm sure the ride was exhilarating until he tumbled off, broke his tooth, suffered a punctured lip. Mama apparently took him to Bailey's clinic for treatment and never had the heart to lash him because she said he had already suffered his punishment. <laughs> when I was not unconscious by a car while crossing the road to my primary school, St. Paul's Primary, it was my mother's firm taps on my cheek to which I responded to regain consciousness. I obviously don't know how long I had been out cold, but it had been long enough for Mama to receive a phone call at home, dress, get a ride to the school, and come to rouse me. I remember her saying, Arlene, it's Mama, it's Mama. So Mama was there for all of her children. Months ago, she told me that it was a joy to raise the children and that she did the best she could. This included preparing breakfast, combing and braiding hair, washing, earning, sewing uniforms, making dinner, and taking care of daddy. So meticulous was the way she dressed him that whenever daddy turned up for school with a tie that didn't quite match the pants, the teachers at school would say, we know Miss Warren gone away on holiday. <laughs> Hands up, anybody here whoever attended one of Mama's luncheons or dinners. I bet, you see? Look around. Thank you. There only needed to be a friend or a family member visiting from overseas or a celebratory occasion like Christmas or a birthday. Oh my goodness. She never asked anybody to bring anything. You just had to bring your appetite. And that would allow you to enjoy a minimum spread of about 13 foods. Rice and peas, macaroni pie, pickle green bananas or bare fruit, dove peas, beef stew, baked turkey or chicken, baked pork, ham, sauce, pudding, vegetables, salad, cake, sweetbread, and porn. We have never seen anybody so happy to do so much work just for the sheer enjoyment of having people together in one place for food, joy, and fellowship. Hers was the gift of hospitality, such that my brother Trevor, whom you heard earlier, told me that Aunt Joyce in Canada said, your mother doesn't prepare meals, she prepares feasts. Mama felt her body declining for a few years and intensified her life in Christ. A few months ago when the family was together in the dining room, Mama was lying on the couch, and Glenn was sitting near her feet. He noticed that she was staring up at what seemed to be the ceiling. Curious, he asked her, Mama, was that you're looking at? She responded, heaven. He asked her if it was a good view. She answered affirmatively, snapped out of it, and became engaged once again in the conversation around her. She made sure to thank Daddy, Elaine, Henrietta, and me very often in the last few months for all that we were doing for her. She assured me that she was thankful to God and surprised for a very long life and wasn't going to be sad when it was time to go. In recent years with challenging health, Mama's main outings were to the hairdresser and doctor. In your booklet, you'll see a picture of her last trip in June 2021 to a cut above beauty salon in One Accord Plaza, Jackson, St. Michael, 
where the ladies took wonderful care of Mama's hair, which hardly had any gray strands, even for her age. If you notice today how black her hair was, it, is, it was not dyed. That's how her hair remained. Her other outings were to her doctor, Dr. Cindy Flower, who attended her for at least two decades. Our family expresses sincere thanks and appreciation to Dr. Flower for the guidance and care required to help Gwendolyn maintain her quality of life for as long as was possible. We also sincerely thank Dr. Ambrose Ramsey, her gerontologist, who was able to assist us when Mama was unable to travel to his office. To Eddie, Norma, and Trevor, the annual birthday flowers brought tremendous joy to Mama's heart. To Sonja, you went out of your way to find shoes to help when Mama's toes were painful a few years ago. To Judy and Ben, thank you for the therapeutic supplies. To Daddy's sisters, Aunt Ray and Daph, who have flown in from Canada. Mama's nephew, Robert, who took a red-eye flight to be here today. To family and friends in Canada, New York, Delaware, Tampa, Georgia, Texas, and other United States, and England watching the live stream. To neighbors and every person in attendance here, we thank you for your loving support and for the ways you made Aunt Vi's life happy in her time with us. To Maxie and the technical team, we thank you for helping us broadcast today's proceedings around the world. To Bishop the Reverend Derek Richards, the other ministers and ministerial staff, as well as the members of the communion staff, the Bourne family is deeply appreciative of the services which you all have rendered. Be assured that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. To my pastor, thank you for praying for my mother's soul in these difficult months. As I close, I'll say one more thing. When Mama was little, a friend of her father would drive up on Sunday evenings, run up the red steps at the villa, jump on the piano upstairs, and play a song called, Please Don't Talk About Me when I'm gone. But oh, she didn't mean like this. For my research revealed that it was really a song about a couple breaking up. And the fellow was advising the girl not to say anything about him if she couldn't say anything nice. Well, Aunt Vi hasn't left us in that predicament. We could go on and on finding nice things to say, nice, true things to say. This is not the kind of eulogy where you'll hear beautiful tributes and then ask yourself if you went to the wrong funeral. This is a homegoing celebration of the most beautiful soul I have ever met in this world. Our mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister-in-law, aunt, Auntie Lynn's sister, our cousin, daddy's wife, who became absent from the body, present with the Lord, in one of the downstairs bedrooms of the villa, 90 years and nine days after being born, Mrs. Gwendolyn Viola Bourne. Thank you for your attention. Before we listen to the written word of God, we will sing the hymn, Come We That Love the Lord, after which we will hear the word of God recorded in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9, and the Gospel of John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and verse 27, to be read respectively by Dr. Arlene Bourne and Enrita Bourne. Come we that love the Lord.
Please be seated. The epistle reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and glory and honor at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom Though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the Gospel of Christ. After the singing of this hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, the Word of God will be proclaimed to us through the voice of our Bishop, the Reverend Derek A. Richards.
Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the name of God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I extend special greetings to my colleague, the Reverend J. Henry Bourne and his family, and extend to you the prayerful support and sympathies of the people of God called Methodists in the South Caribbean district. And our colleagues across the district has asked me to greet you well and to extend the sympathies on their behalf. I also extend greetings to you on behalf of the Connectional Bishop, the Reverend Galbraith, Everell Galbraith, and the other Connectional officers. Please be assured that across the Connection, our brothers and sisters are viewing this service and are engaging in prayerful thoughts for you and your family. Let us pray. O oh God, O oh God, we bless you and we give you thanks that your word never returns unto you void, but that your word always accomplishes your purposes. So, Lord God, uphold me now that I may proclaim Christ and Christ alone for salvation. So let the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There is a story that is told of this gentleman who felt ill for quite a long time and he assumed that he was going to die and this thought of death tormented him to the point where it became almost impossible for him to sleep. Every, th every time he fell off to sleep, he had the same dream over and over. And this dream was that he was falling into a bottomless pit. As a result, the man stayed awake for several days and as a result became extremely sick and eventually died. I assure you that based on my visits and interactions with our dear sister Gwendolyn, that there was absolutely no fear of death. As a matter of fact, she spoke openly and confidently about death. One may ask, what is it then that makes the difference between her own acceptance of death and this man? You see, my brothers and sisters, Gwendolyn knew something that this man did not know. She knew that underneath are the everlasting arms of God and that death does not lead into a bottomless pit because according to the Apostle Paul, who affirmed when he said, I am persuaded, I am convinced that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature can separate me from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. She knew and affirmed that not even death had the power to separate her from God and from God's love. Therefore, underneath are the everlasting arms of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the Gospel according to St. John, faces his own death as he became so acquainted with this reality of his death, he began to speak to his disciples openly and confidently about his own death. He said to them that he was going away 
and that where he was going, they would not be able to follow him at this time. And then he spoke very plainly to them after they were not getting it. He said to them, guys, I'm going to die. The disciples became heartbroken. The disciples were devastated by this news. The disciples could not conceptualize life without the physical presence of their Lord and Master Jesus, and as a result, begun to become very grieved. It is within that context that Jesus spoke our words in our passage for today, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In the face of his own death, Jesus comforted and assured his disciples that there was no need to be afraid. No need to be afraid because of the many promises of God. No need to be afraid because of the very presence of God with them. So to Jesus again, speaks these words to the family today and to all of us in the face of death, Jesus again says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. There are at least three things that Jesus assured his disciples that I wish to pull from this passage for us today. First of all, Jesus is saying to them that they can be assured of his presence, that in the face of death, in the face of the coming calamity, in the face of this time of anxiety, there is no need for them to be afraid because they are assured of his presence. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In other words, you can trust my presence. You can trust that I will be with you in and through this time of distress and hardship and calamity. Be assured that I will be with you at this time when you are struggling to understand your own emotions and as you are struggling to come to, ac to accept the reality of what has happened, be assured that you are not alone. Be assured that you are not abandoned. Be assured that you are not left up to yourself. Be assured that there is one who is with you, who is the Lord God Almighty. Be assured that there is one who is with you, whose presence you can trust, whose presence you can be assured of every time and every moment. And so my brothers and sisters, Jesus again assures us in this time of death and grief that we can trust his presence. Because you see, for the disciples, they were thinking that Jesus was going to abandon them that they were going to be left alone. And the truth is that there comes a time in our life, especially at the death of a loved one, where sometimes it feels as though we are alone, that even when we are surrounded by many friends and acquaintances, the, the, the very depth of grief can be so, so deep, so devastating, that it makes us feel as though we are alone. It is in this context that Jesus says, you are never alone. You are not alone because I am with you always, even to the close of the age. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never abandon you. You will never have to go through this season of your life alone. 
It is no wonder the psalmist declared in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. The psalmist is assured that even as he goes through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want to proclaim to us today that when we go through the darkest seasons of our lives, when we go through the darkest valleys, that we are never alone, that it doesn't matter how much the darkness screams at us and tells us that we are alone, that we are never alone because God, our God, God Almighty, the God who was and is and is to come, assures us in Jesus that he will never leave us no forsake us. This is a promise for those who grieve, but it is also a promise for the one who has passed through the valley of the shadow of death. For both, Jesus says, I will never leave you. For the person who has passed through the rivers of water, Jesus assures them that he is with them. It is in this context that the Apostle Paul says, I am persuaded that not even death can separate me from the presence of God. Not even death can separate me from the presence of the one who is the Lord God Almighty. So for the one who goes through the valley of death, Jesus says, I'm with you. For those who grieve and mourn the death of loved ones, again Jesus says, I am with you always. He assures us, my brothers and sisters, of his presence. Even the days are long and dreary, he says, I'm with you. Even when the grief is deep and painful, he says, I'm with you. I'm with you always to the close of the age. Secondly, Jesus assures us of his promises. He shows us of his presence, but he also shows us of his promises he says to the disciples, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself so that where I am, there you may be also. In other words, Jesus is saying, not only am I assuring you of my presence, I'm assuring you that my promises are good forever and ever. That even though I go through this valley of death, even though I go through the waters of death, and even though you go through this time of grief and pain and separation, be assured that my promises are still good. And so today Jesus assures us that his promises to Gwendolyn are still good. Jesus assures us that she has experienced the fulfillment of his promise when he says, I am going, but I'm coming again for you, so that where I am, there you may be also. I want to preach to us today that those who are in Christ Jesus, when they pass through the waters of death, they are not separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. They continue to be in the presence of God. And when we meet like this and celebrate their lives, let us understand that their destination is not the cemetery or the crematorium. Let us understand that their destination 
is in the very presence of God himself. Let us understand that their destination is in heaven with Jesus. I hear the word of God saying in the book of Revelation where the angel of the Lord says to John, who are these people and where have they come from? John says, Lord, I don't know, but you know. The angel of the Lord said to him, these are they who have come through the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and they have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are they who have served the Lord through all eternity. And now they are gathered from every nation, every tribe, every language, and they are now around the throne of God. Yes, these are they who have made it. Yes, these are they who have remained faithful. These are they who have kept the word of the Lord. These are they who have made Jesus their sure foundation. These are they who have received the Lamb as their Lord and Savior. And now they are in the presence of God. Now they have received their reward. As the Apostle Paul strives towards this, he says, I will press on to the mark of the high calling. Because the Apostle Paul knew that the destination of death is not a grave somewhere but in the very presence of Jesus. And so today, Jesus has kept his promise to Gwendolyn, the promise that he would come to take her so that where he is, there she may be also. I can hear the angels echoing, saying she has made it safely over. I hear the angels singing, saying she has arrived Another one has arrived home safely. She has made the passage and she has arrived. Hallelujah, there is another one in the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah, there is another one who has entered into the throne. She has arrived safely. Why? Because the Lord assures us of his promises. And just as he assures Gwendolyn of his promise, so too he assures us of his promises. The promise that he says, I will take care of you according to my riches and glory. Promises like, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Promises like, you can trust my faithfulness every morning. Great is thy faithfulness unto you. We are assured of the promises of God. And again, sometimes life becomes very difficult, very dark, very bleak. And sometimes the handwriting seems to be on the wall. And it is in those moments that we're reminded that we can trust the report of the Lord, that his report is sure, that even when the experts of this world are saying something else, we can trust God. Why? Because he's a miracle-working God. Why? Because he does that which can't be done. Why? Because he is able to move mountains. Why? Because he's Lord God Almighty, who is able to do all things. So he says, my friends, you can trust my promises. And even now, in this hour, in this moment, Jesus assures us that his promises are still trustworthy. He says, you can trust my presence. He says, you can trust my promises. And finally, he says, you can trust my person. So Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how do we know the way? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying, you can trust my person. You see, this is not just about a list of things to do. This is about a person to follow. 
This is not just about religion. This is about the person of Jesus. And you see, my friend, the Lord is saying to us, don't get it all mixed up. Because there are many people who get it mixed up and think that what is important in this life is to live what they call a good life. It's to live a good life. And Jesus is saying that it's more than that. It's more than being a good person. It's more than living a good life. At the end of the day, it's about what you have done with Jesus. It is about your relationship with Jesus. It is about what you have made of your relationship with Jesus. It is about a person. And so there are persons who would say to me, Rev, you got to be realistic. We are living in a modern world. And there are many ways to the same place. And I say to them that that is a life from the pit of hell. Because Jesus continues to say to us, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and there is no other way to the Father except through me. It's a life from the pit of hell. We are still asked to make up our minds about Jesus. We still must decide about Jesus. And I want to show you, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus continues to call each and every one of us, simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, and even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus. That is all. Gwendolyn made up her mind a long time ago what she would do with Jesus. And she affirmed that again and again and again. And she made Jesus her all in all. She made Jesus her number one priority. She made Jesus the Lord of her life. She made Jesus her everything. And if there's one thing that we can learn from her life today, if her life has meant anything to us, it is for us also to make Jesus our own. It is for us to make Jesus our Lord and our Savior and our Deliverer. It is for us to decide that for me, it is Christ and Christ alone. For me, it is the way of the cross, and that alone. Jesus says, you can trust my presence. You can trust my promises, and you can trust my person. I will never let you down. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Once you make a decision about Jesus, he will never disappoint. I hear the songwriter saying, he never disappoint me one day. Since I joined the army of the Lord, he never disappointed me one day. You too can be assured of eternal life. You too can be assured of life abundantly in this life and in the life to come but you must make up your minds about Jesus. I want to challenge you today, even as I challenge myself, to be assured that Jesus assures us of his presence. He assures us of his promises. He assures us that he alone is the way, the truth, in the life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us just spend a moment in quiet prayer and reflection as we contemplate these words and make our own decisions in the quietness of our hearts.
kindly stand. Turn with me to page 10 of the Order of Worship as we affirm our faith in the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Kindly be seated for prayer. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God, our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, a blessing and honor, Thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Gwendolyn Viola Bourne, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing her life has brought to others, for her service to her generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness, which have followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world are over, and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and Amen. As indicated in the order of service, if you have not um, gotten a chance to give your offering as um, instructed while you are leaving the chapel, the baskets are at the back of the chapel, you can kindly drop your offering there. Before we do the commendation, we sing to the glory of God when the day of toil is done.
for the commendation. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our sister Gwendolyn Viola to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her, and let perpetual light shine upon her. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we bring this service of thanksgiving to an end, we will sing the hymn, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. After the benediction, we invite the congregation to remain standing as the casket leaves the chapel.
received the benediction. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory, forever and ever, and the people of God say, Amen, amen and Amen. Please remain standing. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him. And his righteousness to the children's children.
is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our sister has departed out of this life and Almighty God in his mercy has taken her to himself, we therefore commit her body to the ground, dust to dust. Ashes to ashes, earth to earth. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We proceed with the reading of Psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of man. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is cold. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all day, all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us, yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
talking to? Who are you talking to? We sing to the glory of God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, day. Fail not as thou hast been, the forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, no mercies I see. All I have a need, the die hands are provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, no mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand that's provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin, and the peace that end your end. Thine on their presence to cheer and to guide. Straight for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessing soul mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. We continue with Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may know what thou dost love and do. 
from heaven saying unto me from henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord even so says the Spirit for they rest from their labors let us pray O merciful God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Father of mercies and God of all comfort raise us up we pray from death of sin to a new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. 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 Support us, O oh Lord, all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The day thou givest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymn ascended. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest.
receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you. Amen. Amen.